my dear friends in Christ welcome to our reflection for the eighth sunday of the year let me begin with a story of father murphy who had a wonderful nature ready to help anyone in need was at the mall and noticed an elderly woman struggling to push a shopping cart towards the checkout counter so he rushed to her aid took over the cart and pushed it all the way up to the counter when he looked back for the woman she was still standing exactly where he took over her cart and she said i was using the cart to lean over as a support to hold on for my walking as i left my walking stick in my car people are sometimes blind to reality and only see what they want to see today's gospel while speaking about blindness Jesus makes us aware of different types of blindness that we can be affected by not because we are bad people like father murphy in our story but because we all see life from our perspective blindness is not only physical we real we realize but can be emotional mental spiritual theological etc these affect our judgment and our decisions and actions in order to lead a blind person one must be sighted in order to teach one must be knowledgeable otherwise the blind person and the student both will be lost the sight and the knowledge specified in the gospel are the insight that come from faith and the holy spirit and the knowledge that comes from a faithful relationship with the lord the point of this image of the blind leading the blind is that we must be careful when choosing whom to follow for example to emulate lest we stumble into a pit alongside our blind guide a corollary is that we have no business trying to guide other unless we ourselves can see clearly this is an important message in a day when so many self appointed gurus why for control of our spiritual affairs our financial affairs our medical affairs and our romantic affairs as well as our family affairs whatsapp and uh, facebook give us so many messages that can lead us astray from what we really like to follow some are blind but others see vulnerability and exploit those vulnerability see where they can take advantage of another story of father murphy is about his accident and he was in sitting in a train coach with a broken arm in a sling across him sat two hippies with the long hair mated almost and uh, quite uh, dirty dress and beard and beads on their necks so one of them turned to father murphy and asked so what happened man while well, i slipped and fell in a bath tub and broke my arm he turned to his companion and asked him what's a bad tap man how would i know i am not catholic the other responded the joke apart we should stop judging others 
harshly and unreasonably because number one no one except god is good enough to judge others because only god sees the whole truth and only he can read the human heart hence only he has the right and authority to judge us two we are often prejudiced in our judgment of others and total fairness cannot be expected from us three we do not see all the facts the circumstances or the power of the temptation which have led a person to do something evil for we have no right to judge of this because we have no right to judge of this because we have the same faults ourselves and often to a more serious degree than the person we are judging remember jesus's funny example of a man with a log stuck in his eye trying to remove the dust particle from another's eye saint philippinani commented watching the misbehavior of a drunkard there goes philip but for the grace of god helen keller said the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision a fully laden truck was struck under a narrow underpass bridge nothing the driver could try could move it traffic on both side lined up the police the municipal authorities are all breaking their heads to solve the problem a young boy returning from the school came over to one of the official tapped at his pants legs and said something the officer shouted at the boy here we are all engrossed in solving this huge problem and you're coming to disturb us what do you want what's your problem sonny uh, sir i have a small suggestion uh, to solve this problem oh you little boy have a big idea to solve the problem here the engineers and the police officers could not find a solution what's your big idea big boy once one of our teachers he began explaining to the police officer gave a, a similar scenario just let out a little air from the tires and the truck will sit down a bit and there would be a gap between the truck and the bridge and it can pass through that indeed was the quick solution which let out much air from the ego of the officers i suppose the eyes are useless when the mind is blind and refuse to open up to more solutions the disciple would become the master one day the lord reminds us don't judge by appearances of size color nationality or age the good news is the fully trained disciple will be like his master the lord says we the disciples of jesus are called to be like him our doubts about ourselves our feelings of inadequacy arise in part from the fact that we forget that we did not choose him he chose us no one can come to the father unless he draws him we have been chosen god has chosen to trust us he believes that he we can be his true disciples this should be for us a source a great joy and great humility and a determination to become fully trained and self confident if i am his disciple it is because he has chosen me and trust me to become like him 
this is something to be celebrated today as we read the gospel a member of a monastic order once committed a fault a council was called to determine the punishment but when the monks the monks uh, assembled it was noted that father thomas was not among them the superior sent someone to call him so father thomas got up and went for the meeting with a leaking jug filled it with the water and carried it with him when the others saw this they asked him what is this father the old man said to them my sin run out behind me like the water from the jug and i do not see them and today i am coming to judge the error of another the eyes are useless when the mind is blind they say and we should leave all judgment to god and practice mercy and forgiveness remembering the advice of saints when you point to one finger accusation to another three of your fingers point at you let us pay attention to the jewish rabbi's advice he who judges others favorably will be judged favorably by god the first reason Jesus gives us is we have no right to criticize unless we ourselves are free of faults that simply mean that we have no right to criticize at all because there is no such there is so much bad in the best of us and there is so much good in the worst of us that it will it it will become any one of us it ill becomes any of us find fault with the rest of us jesus clarifies his point by presenting the humorous simile of a man with a log stuck in his own eye trying to extract a speck of dust from someone else's eye it means that the task of fraternal correction removing the speck should not be attempted without prior self examination though the disciple need not be completely without imperfection before the process can begin the christian disciples are called upon to be both guides and teachers since a teacher cannot lead his student beyond what he himself has been taught he must learn from the best teacher and then continue to learn scripture from the best teacher and then continue to learn scripture from all available sources the best being the holy spirit who inspired the holy scripture then the leader must apply what he has learned to his own life before trying to teach others our goal in the christian life must be to become like our teacher jesus in our thoughts in our words and in our actions there's an old story of a blind man walking at night with a lantern oil lantern and someone passing by looked at this blind man said <laughs> laughed at him and said why would you need a lantern you're a blind man why would you carry one well i carry the lantern not for myself for others like you so you don't bump into me you can see me oh i see i understand now and the blind man went on with this lantern until he bumped into somebody and both fell and he asked can't you see well can't you see and the blind man said well i can't see that's why i'm carrying the lantern where is your lantern is gone out there's no more oil left we all might think that we are examples and carry the lantern the light of our wisdom and knowledge 
our perfections we think but eventually the oil runs out the wick dries up and we still carry the land and without a light without an example and we become a cause stumbling block for someone to fall we need to examine ourselves regularly put oil and trim our wigs and make sure we are a light leading to leading others let us remember and acknowledge the hypocrisy we all live every day without even our knowing it it is the word jesus used we tell people how concerned we are about our kidneys and hearts sugar and cholesterol levels when we don't give a second thought to the gaping the rotting wounds of sin covering us from head to toe it is even worse when someone else falls into sin ignoring the glaring faults of our own we point to the finger of accusation and whisper about them and say how could they instead of asking how could we we must look at our own sin first the gospel reminds us let us pray lord loving father you have given us no blind guide to lead us but our one teacher jesus christ our lord who slow learning disciples we are he had not come to condemn us but to forgive and save give us clear eyes to look into our own hearts and consciences but dim them with the shades of love when we see the faults of those around us and may we inspire others by our christ like living we ask this through christ our lord amen god bless